you for it. Hi, uh, good morning, if anybody's there. Um, him and George just came in chatting to me, so he's held me up. And, uh, I think it might be past uh, quarter past, but never mind. Right, I have said I am going to be doing a robin. So what I'm going to do is do a watercolour robin a little bit like this one. So I'm going to just use two colours, well three I beg upon. I'm going to be using uh, indigo, indigo mixed with cadmium red, uh, I'm just tucking my chair in, makes a really lovely warm brown. You can see they're all mixed up ready. And then I'm going to use a combination of cadmium red and Indian yellow for, which I've put in this little glass jar for ease, um, which is for his red breast. So let's get on with it. Um, just prop this up somewhere. And no drawing, as you can see, what I tend to do is basically draw with water. So we could end up with a very interesting version of this robin, but I'm going to give it a go. So I'm using a, this is a rosemary co, see that's worn out of the writing, it's on there somewhere. So a rosemary co and co, a um, sable and it's a series 33, really lovely brush. So what I'm going to do is paint with water to get the shape. I'm hoping you can see this. I'm starting with the top of the head. So I'm just putting that shape in there. It has quite a, a sort of squarish bit because of the angle of its head. And I'm coming down past its neck. I mean, the thing is, when you're doing painting with water, it allows you to um, alter things quite significantly as time goes by. So that's quite useful. So I'm just thinking about his, this is, I'm thinking about his main body here. So now I'm doing a few marks like this. If you get some hit and miss with your brush, that's actually really quite useful. In fact, I'm looking at it now, that needs to go up a little bit. It's difficult with the light, <laughs> trying to get the right shape, but it will all come out in the water. I'm quite sure of that. Um, <clears throat> I will be using this lovely little brush where I used it a while ago. This is a Rosemary & Co as well, called an Extended Point Series 46, size 6. I think that's going to be very useful for this painting. So he's got his little head tilted up. Um, and I will just pop a, use this brush immediately, for his beak. Just loading it up with water and just check the angle, because he's looking up quite a bit, because it's quite a pronounced sort of raise of the head. So if I just pop that in there, and as I say, if there are little gaps, it really doesn't matter. That's quite desired, actually. And then, I wonder if any of this is reading um, the water <laughs> that I'm putting on here. Uh, I've just noticed there's some people here, sorry, I can't see who is yet, so I'll, I'll come back to you in a bit. But good morning and welcome. Do you know, I can see he's getting a really fluffy little robin. It's uh, fluffing his feathers for the, for the winter. Right, then where his wing is here, I just want to make sure that that's kind of got plenty of water. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Then his tail feathers come off. So sort of, I'm actually only gonna leave it there and build it up as I Go, otherwise you're going to get a bit too bogged down but I might just pop the legs in whilst I'm thinking about it so it comes down here. It could end up being a completely new species of robin, who knows. <laughs> in fact the thing is just to get on and have some fun with your paints isn't it. There will be, I might just pop a little bit of that in now, he's on a He's on a branch, so I'll put that in now. Okay, so I've got that down now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm gonna go in with the red. So I'm sticking with this. Why am I sticking with it? No, I'm not gonna stick with that brush, nope. Taking a, I'm dabbing my brush off, I don't even see. I've just got a bit of this tissue. Just dabbing a lot of the water off my sable brush so I can pick up a lot of the red and spatter it, and why not? <laughs> and um, that allows me to start dropping the pigment in. And so I'm literally going to touch the paper 
and allow the pigment to do its thing, have a little wander around. And if it ends up being that I need stronger pigment, that's good. I'd rather have less at the moment and then be able to add. So bringing that down, deliberately leaving that area there, just dropping the pigment in and thinking also about the direction of the feathers. So even at this point, this early stage of the painting, I'm dropping that in. Allow it to really have a bit of fun wandering around. Pop some there. There you are, gone quiet. <laughs> Concentration, that's what it is. So I'm going to bring some of this now under here, under his chin, with this smaller brush. It's a, a delight to work with this brush. I'm deliberately leaving some gaps as I can probably, you can probably see. So I'm just going to bring that shape a bit more in that area. So I can suggest a few, a few feathers here and there now. Lovely puffed up robin. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to take a little bit of, well I'm just picking up a bit of water because what I want to do is just suggest some of that pigment into his tail feathers. And it doesn't have to be exact. I mean, if you want to paint it in a more accurate way, then that, that's fine. Um, but it doesn't have to be. I think less is, less is more. Cleaning the brush. And I keep catching, I've got my uh, phone charger on, so it's, um, <laughs> it keeps, the lead keeps bashing the, uh, my little e easel sort of thingy. I'm gonna put a tiny wee bit of color on his beak so that you can see that. I don't want too much at this stage, but just a bit. And if it blends, that's kind of okay. I don't mind. That's getting a lovely little swirl there. <laughs> just so that you can see it, really. <clears throat> and I'm now gonna start coming around the edges. Whilst, so the, the pigment you can see is probably all starting to settle. And that's one of the good things about um, cadmium red, which does granulate a little bit. If I lift that up a bit further and allow you to get a, got these sort of like little spots almost, but that's, that's quite desirable. That's okay, I'm just gonna tip that pigment so I get a bit more concentrated in his breast. Oh, that's good, because the, the pigment's now going down his legs. Good, good. In fact, his legs have disappeared. <laughs> so I'll uh, possibly add a wee bit more to that right now. They have such skinny legs, don't they? And I'll have to bring the um, branch up a little bit, I think, because that's... And they'll have, to, they'll have super long legs otherwise, so improvisation at the ready. There we go, get that branch going in now. Again, I'll add to it. I don't they have spindly legs though, it's interesting. I'll have a little bit more red, just down here to fill in this area. But I want to see that bit there, I want to keep that because that's discerning between his body and his tail fe feathers. So I just want to keep that a little bit more exact. And his wing will tuck in there in a minute, so um, yeah, just I'll leave it. Actually, looking compared to this one, it's a tall and skinny one actually, not such a fat one. Ha! That's because I'm sitting down. It's elongates the uh, your perception of it. Okay, picking up the brown. So this is cadmium red and indigo, which is an interesting combination, but it does work very well. So what I want to do is start putting some of that colour in a little bit down here. I'm coming away from the red, but of course, as you can see, it's so wet, it's going to merge, but that, again, is absolutely fine at the moment. Pop a little bit around the edge of here. If you touch the dry paper and the wet paper, the, the two then merge quite nicely, which is a, a lovely thing. See how that's starting to move around. It's very, very wet. I'm almost feeling I ought to put the hairdryer on it, but I'm 
tempted not to. Right, I'm going to turn, turn him upside down. <laughs> now, why has that amused me? But it has. I would like a little bit of the brown just at the top here now. And I'm, say, hopefully you can see this. I'm touching the, the dry paper, but then also touching a little bit of the um, wet pigment as well, just to start getting the shape of his head a bit more designed. And I'm also thinking about feathers, so allowing that pigment to blend. Let's see. There we go. Don't want him to look too scruffy. I want to fill some of that in. He's not had a night on the tiles. He's nice and relaxed. <laughs> but at this stage, I want to have the lovely suggestion of those lovely warm feathers. Just get a bit more pigment. So I say touching the dry and then the wet. So you get that combination of the two colours, the red and the brown. And down here are his legs. And his undercarriage. Fill that little hole in. It's interesting, as, as you're sort of painting, your, your eye is dancing all over the place to um, assess what you've done and where you can just add and um, modify. As it's so wet, this wonderful travelling of the pigments is gorgeous I really like that watching it and the, the fact that they split as well um, I'm going to just take colour off this brush a moment taking a lot of the pigment and water off I want to lift some of this there's a lot of water there so I'd like to take some of that off that's it and just there I'm actually just lifting out a little bit because I want the his wing to come around in a minute And then adding to it. <laughs> Drop me tissue. The problem is, of course, is that um, these colours dry a lot lighter, so we'll have to come back and, and strengthen it. But can you see how I deliberately left an area here so it's a little bit lighter to get his eye in? In fact, what I'll do is I'll just lift a little bit more out. So when I come to paint the eye, there's a, a lighter area. I'm just lifting the pigment out with the tip of this brush and rubbing it onto my tissue or dabbing it onto my tissue. That may not be working. <laughs> so tissue to the rescue. I just might as well do this now while I think about it. Just dab a little bit. I don't want it to be too light. I'll get that shape ready for the eye in a minute because then I can add rather than take away. Okay, <clears throat> and I need to add a bit more brown here on the this side. Just going to lay my brush, using the shape of the bristles to help guide the shape of the feathers. again. That concentration. I'm going to just lift that area out because I'm forgetting that that's his wing there. So I want to come back to that when it's a little bit more dry. Never be afraid to adjust. That needs to be quite a bit darker. I'm also not too sure about this area, how that's reading in the 
Come on, right, I'm just going to just soften these areas with a little bit of water. I don't mind some white, but I'm just soften it a little bit. Maybe put a bit more pigment in. And I think this time now I need to strengthen my cadmium red and Indian yellow. So I'm just going to get some more pigment, picking up cadmium yellow. Uh, less water this time, so quite quite strong, and then the cadmium red. I hope it's a really cheery, bright orangey red. There we go, and you can see that's a lot lot thicker, so that I can start building the strength of pigment. So they have warmer, brighter red breasts. Actually, a little bit more cadmium, no, Indian yellow, sorry. Just to make it lovely and warm. And again, remember the shape of the feather. So I use the brush to um, help guide your mark making. Maybe just a wee bit more water. I'm going to pop a bit more up here. I'm literally dabbing as you can see. Eee, keep going quiet folks. <laughs> Enjoy the rare moment of me going quiet. <laughs> Done a little blob there. Not that that matters. That's better. It's more cheerful, isn't it? I'm clearing my brush. You can tell that cadmium red is opaque. Look at my water. <laughs> Right, I'm going to come back to the um, wing on this side and again I want the pigment to be a bit thicker so I'm going to add more indigo and cadmium red, again make it a lot thicker to make it darker. few darker accents here and there and then I can do this wing which is sort of tucked around here and if you're not careful you get a bit too fiddly so it's kind of like put it in there and then leave it and even if it blends away I rather like the fact that it disappears a little bit into the the rest of it says I continue. I'm going to take a little bit of that off my pigment, off my paint brush, should I say, a little bit strong, and I want to add a wee bit more strength in a couple of places down here. I don't want to have big muscly legs, but I'd like them to be a bit more, have a bit more strength, and a little bit more here and there, these feathers. The whole time this area is, is drying, which um, will then enable me to do his, um, his eye. So, dancing around a little bit all over the place just to get some drying time. So I put the hair dryer on it, what will happen is it will stop the, the wonderful natural um, separation and diffusion of the, of the pigments, which I uh, prefer that to happen and allow it to do its own thing a bit. answer some questions should I have a look I'm just standing up so I can see as well what anybody has said hello everybody who's here how very nice of you to be here thank you for your company so this is our little Christmas Robin 
I'm just going to put water. So I'm getting my sable. And I'm going to just dab maybe a bit more. Some water in here. And I might lift out some of those colours in a moment. We'll see how it moves around. I think it needed to diffuse a little bit. In a few places. Yeah, just get some shape to his red breast. And now I've stood up and see he looks a bit of a chunky bird. Just putting a bit of definition around here. But I think this kind of painting needs to be, um, as I said just now, less detailed, less fiddling, and more just enjoy it. I'm going to pop the beak in. Again, just literally going over that line. This brush is fabulous. This is this um, series six, no, sorry, it's a size six, series 46, uh, extended point by Rosemary & Co. Absolutely gorgeous. It has to be in your arsenal of brushes. Uh, that's quite wet, as you can see, so I don't want that going down too far. So keen to get on and do the eye. So I'll step away <laughs> for a minute. I don't know, maybe I'll do a bit of fiddling here. Be aware, don't fiddle. Or maybe just a bit. Some darker bits here and there, quite nice. Right, just don't do too many. <laughs> right, gonna turn him around and do this eye. Oi, 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 oi. Sticking with this wonderful brush. So he has, it's sort of a bit flat like that, and then it goes up. If it bleeds a little bit into the red, that, that's not too bad. What you want to do is keep a bit of a white spot in the middle to suggest um, light. Let's see if I can do that without trashing him. His uh, mascara is running a little bit. I don't mind that too much. He's got a lot of mascara running, <laughs> but never mind. <laughs> My um, tissue that I've got, I need to buy some kitchen paper. Doesn't lift as well, but I might just see if I can get some of that out. I think I'd say the, the biggest thing is not to worry too much. As that dries, I'll be able to adjust it. Paint some red around it. Okay, now I'm gonna come down to the, the branch. Let that settle a little bit. And I need to make this a little bit stronger, but not massively. No, just got the brown again. What I might do, good old green gold, is add a touch of green gold because it'll suggest that there's some moss or something on it. See, I haven't filled in the whole thing. The reason being that I'm going to come underneath with some water in places to just get a bit of um, lighter colour here and there by allowing it to fade away. And a tiny touch of green gold. It just adds a bit of dis difference to the whole look of the branch rather than it just being this sort of dull brown. Got some lichen on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> and that'll probably be it. Leave it to blend away. Need some serious room eye makeup remover up here. <laughs> I'm going to get a different brush back in just a jiffy. <laughs> I 
I needed a brush with a firmer point so I can direct where I want to lift the pigment out. I found his eye. So it's a, a totally old, no idea, but it is a sable. But it's a little bit more firm. I want to just lift some of this out to correct the eye. So it happens when you're a bit impatient, isn't it? <laughs> Right, what I will do, will I? Can you bear the noise of a hairdryer? Just for a second, so if I dry that area, I can do the, the um, um, eye better. And now I'm just looking, thinking, ooh, I might be a bit more red in here. It's a trouble, fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. It's dangerous. No, I like that. Another thing now I've stood up, I can see. This is the trouble, it's why I don't sit generally to paint because I'm I'm short. <laughs> so you get the perspective wrong. I certainly do anyway. But I think enough fiddling. Otherwise, I'll make a real pig's ear of it. Okay. You're going to have to bear with me, hair dryer. Just for around the eye. Should do it. Right, let's get this eye right. Aye, aye. And she's got gorgeous red breast now. Okay, going in, doing it properly this time. Famous last words. Don't paint over the light bit. And then I'm going to have some red to go around the edges to build that back up where I'd lifted it. So dry, doing brush marks. Oh, it's almost on, on dry paper now. That's rather nice, actually. More controlled, although I do love wet and wet, but I can just now literally sort of draw around his eye and get those marks to come away. If anybody's going to paint this, can you share what you do in the group? I'd really love to see your version. And I'm sure they'll be better than mine because you've got more time. I double, double dare you. <laughs> Giving that sense of direction now. Kind of looking like a cockerel at the moment for me. <laughs> My imagination's hilarious. But using the brush now, just bringing a bit more pigment down here. You know when you're fiddling. You can just feel it and guess what? I'm fiddling. But I'm having fun fiddling. Oh, update folks on Mullion Cove Hotel. The apparent, um, apparently what they've done is they've reactivated my page so, um, and I will be altering some of the info. But um, anybody who's interested, next year, please, World Covid, do one. We want to have some fun. 25th of April. Uh, five days, oh, is it six days, five nights, five nights, six days, whatever. A nice period of time and um, lots of painting fun 
in the most fantastic hotel that you go home two sizes too big, by the way. Be warned. But yeah, it's now apparently on the page. I'm going to go and... You have to find um, ho breaks and things, I think, on the holiday page. Something like this. So I'm going to take a little bit of that out whilst I'm yip yapping to you now. Possibly better when I concentrate. <laughs> Yeah, just um, popping some water in in places just to foresee that background so I get a bit more of um, an interest to his foliage. Foliage? Feathers. Um, guess who is fiddling for England right now? So I am gonna stop. No, I'm not. Just seen something else. Just a wee bit under his beak here. And soften it. And that's my little Christmas robin, I think. Don't want any more down there. Come on, folks, you tell me. I'm going to do it anyway, but I was going to say, shall I stop? Shall I stop? I'm going to. That's it. Robin accomplished. Says she continuing. There we go. If I move that around, can you see how the water's starting to disperse his feathers on his chest? I think it's it's done. That's it. Finished a little bit different to this one, but then you never paint the same thing twice. And as I've said, by sit, uh, sitting, that alters my perspective completely. So I may well, and you know, I've, see, messed his beak up now. Dear, oh dear. But we'll, I think I really do need to step away. I've got my angle wrong, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> you get the gist. <laughs> what I'll do is I'll photograph this one as well so that you've got that one to look at. Right, folks, that's it. I'm going. Yeah, he's cute. Yeah, Pam, yeah, he is. <laughs> right, going to lift this out of here and just give you a, a bit of a close-up on him. Yeah, you can see, look, I've got the angle wrong for his beak, but that doesn't... If you have a look at this one, another... That's kind of got a better angle, but no, it doesn't matter. You get the gist and you get the process. Right, I'm going to say cheerio. Um, I'll quickly recap. All I've done is use indigo and cadmium red together to make the brown. And then it's Indian yellow and cadmium red added together to make the ready, ready sort of brown breast. I can see I'm going to have to go back in there and put some more um, brown in it to uh, get the shape right. But anyway... Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed it, so I hope you have too, and have a fantastic weekend, folks, and I shall drop in sometime next week. Bye for now. Bye.